Hey guys, it's Alec coming to you with a new YouTube video. Here we are out in the shop with my Turbo GMC and today we're going to be covering spark plugs and specifically which ones should you run, how should you gap them, how to change them, and things like that. So to get started here, I have my 6 liter forge piston 78 millimeter turbo LS in my GMC Sierra. Uh, this truck has an on three performance hot side on it to flow gases to the turbocharger, um, which makes changing spark plugs on the passenger side where the turbo is very difficult. And I have some tips uh, to give you guys for that portion to change plugs. Uh, the first thing that we're going to get into today though, we're going to talk about spark plugs. And so if you have a mildly modified, about 15, 20 pounds or less, uh, you're gonna wanna run a set of these NGKV power. These are the TR6. Also, the fact that there is a TR5 option. This is more for trucks that are like cam, naturally aspirated, full bolt-on, that kind of thing. Uh, this is where you would find a benefit to running the TR5 plugs. So we're gonna stick with the TR6s today. And then I'm going to walk you through the recommended gap is 25 to 30 thousandths. Now, next you're going to see, I'm going to gap a set of these plugs and show you the correct way to do it and talk about some of the incorrect ways to do it. All right, so I'm going to get these guys opened up. But what I'm going to talk about first as we're getting these open is the fact that there's many ways to gap spark plugs. The most common way that pretty much everyone that's in the automotive industry or the power sports industry has seen is you go to the parts store and you get a set of plugs and they ask if you got a gapping tool. It's right by the desk. You end up saying, no, I don't have a gapping tool. And everyone's got one in their toolbox except me. I don't have one. Uh, my dad had one and I opted to never buy one for the dollar at the parts store. And uh, so it looks like a coin, right? It looks like a quarter. It's got all kinds of markings around. It's got a little bending tool. Don't use one of those. We have a set of feeler gauges right here, and we have a M14 spark plug uh, electrode tightening tool right here. So how this is going to look is we're going to take our spark plugs, we're going to screw them into this tool right here. And it doesn't really matter how far you screw them in, I just like to screw mine in as far as they will go with me still being able to get in there to the electrode like that. And so this nice little handy dandy thumb screw right here at the bottom is uh, used to close the gap on this spark plug. And you can kind of understand it by looking through this. So what I'm gonna talk about today, I kind of mentioned before, 25 to 30 thousand. So I'm gonna go a little bit on the tighter end of that. I'm gonna go with 26 thousandths because I don't have a 25 in my feeler gauges here. And what does this look like? This looks like you grab your spark plug and you run it through here and you say, okay, I got loads of movement in there. So we're gonna tighten this guy down. See that gap start to close up and then it's gonna spring back. So that's something to keep in mind. We're gonna say, okay, we don't have a whole lot of movement up and down in here, but still a little loose. I'm gonna go just a little bit more, about an eighth of a turn or so. We're starting to get a little grab right there, which is almost perfect. I'm just gonna take it just a little bit more Just a tickle. Yeah, that's like perfect. So we got one done. All right, so that one's just a little bit too tight. My feeler gauge can still get in there, but it's dragging a little bit more than I would like. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this feeler gauge and just 
bend it up just a little bit. Now we got the ability to slide through there. Just the way I want it. So that's how we're gonna gap plugs in my truck today. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough. So just to check in with you, I have six of the eight plugs done. All four on the driver's side and the front two on the passenger side. And the reason I don't have the rear two on the passenger side done is because I forgot that my spark plug socket is at home. And so I've been using just a standard 16 millimeter uh, impact socket. And I need for the third cylinder back, I need the socket that has the wrench on the outside of it. Um, because I cannot get a ratchet on this socket specifically to get in there. Now, if I were to cut this with a grinder and cut about five, six millimeters off of it, I could probably make it work, but I'm not cutting Matco sockets and uh, it does not need to be done today. Alrighty guys, so I just wanted to show you real quick. Uh, I have six of the eight plugs in, I think I mentioned that already. And I got to these front two where you see the white plug wire and you see the blue one from going underneath kind of down here by the water pump uh, heater core outlets and I went underneath you can see my green glove and that's how I got to those two so it's kind of hard you do have to end up sticking your arm underneath but uh, you're able to get it this back one um, let's see I'm gonna zoom a little bit back here by the dipstick tube you can just barely see focus there we go that's the last one that i had the hardest time with um this one is you kind of got to use a combo you need a socket that looks like this and has um a hex on the outside of it so that you can stick a wrench on it because it is almost uh impossible not impossible but it's very difficult to get a ratchet in here with the clearance that you have so what i was doing was I was feeding this in through here on the underside and getting that on there. And then once you get that in there, put it on there, then you can get a wrench on that portion of the socket. I know it's hard to see, but you can see it down in there. I'm able to get a wrench on that. And uh, if nothing else, you can take a 5.8 socket or a spark plug socket and you can trim about five, 10 millimeters off of it. You just made yourself a special tool for this kit. Otherwise, I did not have to remove the hot side at all on this thing to do plugs on it, which I'm really happy about. Alrighty guys, so we just got the plugs done on the Turbo Sierra and uh, hopefully I gave you a couple tips, a couple pointers, uh, nothing else. You saw kind of how much more difficult this can be on a turbocharged truck versus a stock truck. So uh, until I see you guys next time, sorry for the shorter video. Wish I had more progress for you. We're just kind of getting the last couple things done for tuning. So see you later. Take it easy. Peace.